Hello everyone, it is the Reaper Hunter, and today we're talking about Remnant from the Ashes, a game from Perfect World Entertainment and Gunfire Games. Remnant from the Ashes is sure as hell not a game I expected to enjoy as much as I do. The easiest layman's explanation that I can give this game is that it's a game with Dark Souls difficulty, Bloodborne and Diablo aesthetic, Risk of Rain power progression, and Borderlands game mechanics. I'm sure there's better examples, but those are what I came up with out the bat. The base synopsis of the game is that Earth has been invaded by some kind of alien interdimensional plant hive mind thing, simply known as the Root or Deadwood. You play as an adventurer who decided to don the task of finding the Root's source of power and destroy it. I'll get more into the story later because it's a little bit more complex than the game itself. The game itself is essentially a linear zone clearer, where you fight your way through mobs to reach a boss at the end. On your way, you can search buildings, mini dungeons, and hopefully find items and gear or even weapons. This is where I believe the real highlight of the game's core mechanics come to play. You see, almost half of this game is procedurally generated. Although maps and tile sets do have a set order and a set boss occurrence, items, dungeons, and even the bosses themselves are completely random chance encounters. This is where elements of Risk of Rain can be seen, because even though there's a set structure and order to things, each run will almost always consist of different elements that will contribute to your power and gear. Sometimes you'll find a charm that reduces aim, sway, or recoil, maybe you'll find a strange coin that can be traded in for a revolver, or maybe you'll be really lucky and not find jack shit until the second boss. Luckily though, it is completely possible to progress and beat the game which is the starting gear. Hell, the lever gun is probably the second best primary in the game. But I'd be lying to you if I said it's not mildly irritating getting gear or items that don't help or match your playstyle in the slightest. Since you know chances of getting something new is rare and far away, it can be kind of frustrating knowing that you're going to be stuck with a useless ring or charm for the next few hours. This can often push players to come to the conclusion that trying to progress further is a lost cause and it's probably better just to start over and hope for better RNG. That being said though, starting from the beginning really isn't the end of the world since this game is actually pretty short as far as the campaign goes. A full run of the whole campaign, which includes clearing all the dungeons, bosses, and mini bosses, averaged to about 20 to 30 hours. 20 if you're kind of rushing through it or just got really good, 30 if you're probably taking your time or if you're even struggling a little bit. It's pretty clear that this game is meant to be replayed over and over and over again, if not, it's kind of encouraged. You can run the same character and just re-roll the campaign over again, kind of like entering New Game Plus in Dark Souls. And like Dark Souls, the monsters will get harder so that way you're not just blowing through everything and things can stay challenging. Speaking of challenge, this game is not for the casual gamer, and I mean that in the most not meme way possible. This game will punish your mistakes and it requires you to learn and get used to its mechanics fast. There's big enemies that take a hell of a lot of damage and will smack the taste out of your mouth. There's small enemies that only have a little bit of help that will swarm you like a huge mass of rats. And oftentimes you'll probably have to deal with both at the same time. Enemies will often drop ammo and you can always replenish your ammo from resting at a crystal, but that doesn't mean ammo management goes completely out the window. One of the easiest ways to get killed in this game is a poorly timed reload or having to switch to a less reliable weapon. This is especially the case in co-op play because then you and your teammate will have to share ammo drops. Thus it's a little bit too easy to leave your partner or yourself completely starved of ammunition. The biggest appeal for me regarding difficulty is that it's possible to become strong but not overpowered. One of the biggest reasons I came to dislike games like Neo or Sekiro was because I never felt like I was getting any stronger. With those games from beginning to end, some random schmuck could walk up to you and two-shot you. In Remnant, you do gradually become able to take more damage, deal more damage with complementary traits, upgrades, and weapon mods. Almost to the point where you can melt off a good quarter of a boss's health in a couple seconds. Speaking of bosses, there's a good variety. There's a lot of quick bosses, quick and agile, slower, tankier magical, heavy based. Most boss encounters in this game are randomized, like stated earlier, which can make encountering them either really cool because you've never seen one before, or really irritating because you've just got the same boss for the third time in a row and you're getting sick of fighting it. Something I kind of dislike about the bosses in this game is that almost all of them have adds or random mobs to fight alongside them. They're not too bad to where they ruin the fights in certain cases, and in often cases they actually are required to provide ammo. But there's a couple cases where a boss will just have a wall of adds and you kind of end up fighting them more than the actual boss itself. I swear I almost stabbed my keyboard in half when I put a boss to almost no health and then some random adds spawned behind me and killed me. 
Essentially, the bosses are the best part of this game, but you're just going to have to get really good at micromanaging. I don't really have a segue for the story, so... Remnant's story is... weird. It actually does have really rich lore. The whole setting of how the world came to be and how the whole route came to be is actually really worth looking into. The problem is that it's all kind of hidden away in notebooks, tablets, and papers tucked in the corner of some obscure room. NPCs will have some dialogue that incite into matters, but it's often more personalized to them. So if you really want to find out what happened to the world, you gotta kind of keep an eye out for those little pieces of papers laying around. A simple summary of the story is that sometime in the 1960s, the root came and essentially swept the world like a tsunami made of fire and thorns. The game takes place about 60 years later after humanity has been almost completely wiped out and overrun by the root. This actually explains a few things I noted my first time playing through, like how there's 60 style cars and billboards strewn about the place. And it actually kind of explains why every gun you find is a garage project of random gun parts and scrap metal since firearm production basically came to a halt. There really is a good story in this game, but I kind of understand why I took a backseat to the core gameplay. NPC lip sync and animation is basically non-existent, but the voice acting is pretty solid, so I do hope they actually kind of expand on the story a little bit more in future expansions. Overall, even though that this game has kind of an ugly $40 price tag on it, I really can't recommend it enough if that wasn't obvious enough. It's challenging, but not to the point where it's a chore to play. There's enough weapons and armor with various stats to adjust to anyone's playstyle. The bosses are interesting and rarely feel unbeatable or too easy. And there's so much replay value that you can easily burn 100 hours into this game and still find new stuff with each playthrough. This game's just fun, and I recommend it to anyone who's looking for a game willing to push them to get good. But overall, that's my thoughts on Remnant. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. I'm going to be streaming this game a hell of a lot because I'm so damn addicted to it right now. So be sure to follow me on Twitch, stay updated on my Twitter, links in the description. Special thanks to my patrons who keep me going, you guys are always awesome and I really can't thank you enough. Thank you all of you who basically just showered me with support about moving on from Warframe. The support I've been getting in that last video is absolutely phenomenal and I feel so good moving into variety content now. As always, I'm the Reaper Hunter and I'll catch you all later.